Hello everyone, I am Tacit and today I'm going to be going over the new mythic weapon that was added during the Soul Forge that quite a few people in Endgame are probably getting. As far as this weapon, you can find it underneath the weapons category as soon as you hit uh, level 10. It is the Mythic Dawnbringer. Quite a expensive weapon, but also one of the strongest weapons in the game, if not the strongest. It is currently the only mythic in the game. It is the Dawnbringer. It is a red, yellow, blue mana cost weapon that can be used with any hero class that you choose. That deals damage to all enemies, boosted by all yellow troops at a 2 times boost ratio. Do keep in mind with this is it does indeed mean all, as in both your allies and your enemies, meaning it could potentially do a total of 16 additional damage if literally every single troop including your allies and your enemy were yellow though realistically the most it's going to be doing as extra damage is around 8 to 10 as if you put a few on your team and the enemy will likely have at least one that's likely with the damage that it will come out to it also ends up gaining on top of all that barrier to all allies and this includes itself as well so all four of your troops will end up getting a barrier barrier of course protects against one instance of damage and additionally if there are 13 or more reds on the board it will gain two additional magic which is relatively trivial but if you're going to be casting it multiple times it could come in handy to uh, have a bunch of red on the board and it's just more incentive to run yellow red uh, based teams which there are quite a few of to be able to craft this you do need quite a bit of resources you need these three weapons which i'm not particularly going to be covering a video on but i do want to go over each one briefly as far as what they do uh, each one of these costs pretty much the exact same they cost 400 of a specific color uh, that they use as well as 100,000 souls, 50 gems, and three celestial trace stones. So let's go over all three of them just real quick and what their kind of use are. Uh, for one, most of them aren't really have a use in PvP for the most part. Like for example, Shattered Blade, this is more of a arena related weapon that you might end up bringing. It deals damage randomly split among enemies, boosted by divines and knights on the team at a five times boost ratio. There isn't really a single viable instance where you would ever put this in your PvP team. Uh, the best troop that it could even be used with is is something like a guard's avatar because it is both divine and a knight but relative to how much damage your guard's avatar is doing relative to this weapon you wouldn't really even need to do that though uh, maybe just if you're running it in arena it would have a quite high damage since if you happen to have drafted a bunch of knights and had a few d divines in there and i believe your hero class could count as well you would end up getting around like 10 15 additional damage which in arena is pretty decent in normal pvp and stuff like that you'll never really need that weapon and by the time you can actually realistically craft this weapon you'd be way beyond early game or possibly even mid game uh, most of these weapons do keep in mind you really won't be buying until much later into the game uh, most of these even if they are decent like the Dawnbringer, are at such a expense that you won't really have the resources within a realistic amount of time so for the next one is Broken Guard. Out of these three, probably the best of the three. It gives all allies a bunch of armor and then five attack. And if there are 13 or more yellow gems on the board, it also gives all allies four life and four magic. That four life and, I mean, that four magic and armor being the two best aspects of it. This can easily be paired with Mercy with a bunch of armor boosting things, uh, such as Rowan or Guard's Avatar that you like to utilize a really high armor source. Uh, could even put in like a set type warrior or something like that. Uh, has a lot of potential as far as using it with the core few uh, armor boosting troops. Could maybe even use it with something like a Tesla if you really wanted to. Uh, there are quite a few options and you'd mainly just end up using it um, to be able to get that nice little burst so that they can do more damage. Uh, not only would it be increasing their armor, which they boost based on, but of course you have the potential of getting those uh, extra magic bursts. And with a Mercy or something, or an Alchemist, you'd be able to put enough yellow onto the board that you would be able to constantly get that buff every single time. And other than that, we have the third one, which is the Dawnstone. The buff itself is pretty decent. The only problem is it is on a red hero class. It gives an ally a bunch of life, half their mana, cleanse, barrier, and enchants them. That's a lot of stuff. It's pretty decent for 12 mana costs, uh, but like I mentioned, it is handicapped just slightly by the fact that it's on a red hero, mainly because you'd mostly be running this with things that have a 50% mana start, none of which are red. Not only that, but every single red hero currently in the game, which is only the Warlord class from Broken Spire and the Assassin class from Mist Skills, uh, both of those are really offensive first slot kind of troops that 
you wouldn't want to use this weapon on uh, because you'd want to throw this on something like a Gorgotha or something that's really, really tanky that's going to be utilizing its mana. Uh, every single red class likes to be used in first slot, and this is basically a weapon you cast on first slot, so there isn't much a need to throw this combination. You'd want to throw it on actual tank, anything that has stone skin, granite skin, uh, any kind of really high defense or a really strong ability. Throwing a Dawnstone onto a Dawnstone isn't really going to get you really far within a battle. And without that synergy, it's not really going to work that well in most team compositions. So let's go and do a couple teams with the new Dawnbringer. We'll just go up against something that's pretty meta right now. The Double Wisp Christine X Queen Mab. That's one of the strongest you can really get. So let's go throw down this one. It is a Gorgolfa, Kraken, Dawnbringer, and Mercy. We are not going to be utilizing the red aspect of it, but what we are going to be using is the little bit of that yellow. Of course, we do have two yellows on our team, and we're also going to be able to put a lot more yellow onto the board. A pretty bad starting board, but we are going to want to start getting Gorgolfa up a bit. Not too concerned with whatever mana he might take initially, especially since we will have the capability of denying out his purple, which I believe I'm just going to go for right now. Uh, main thing we really need to do in combo is the explosion into the board control that we have uh, via our Mercy as well as our Kraken. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't end up getting either of those. He will end up getting some Wisp damage pokes. Uh, we will get some barriers that will be able to protect us. So our first cast, of course, that does damage to everything. 31, based on the fact that he has no yellows and we have two. Uh, a little bit of a low uh, ratio, but as you can see, we're barriered on everything. This will help protect us and make sure that every single form of AoE or anything like that will not be able to uh, hit us as hard uh, when it does come down. So looks like he is getting quite a bit of extra turns, as that team is supposed to. And it is hurting us quite a bit. We do not get the Devour, we do not get the extra turn, and he is going to get a Christine X that is likely going to kill if we cannot get up our Dawnbringer. And look at that, it just takes us right out. And yeah, this team, this team is just insane right now. Are you serious? Why did he revive? We already lost. Just let it, let it lose. <laughs> if you had any... Ch oh, don't. No. <laughs> Why? Why? Please, people, stop using that. Here we go. It, it, it still has Wisp Kraken, but it's not as bad. Let's try this again. <laughs> Round two. Uh, I think that was beyond this team's comprehension. <laughs> Though, realistically, almost every team cannot really compete with that. It is quite powerful right now. That's why everyone actually uses it. So, let's... Let's round two this. So, let's Mercy right here. <laughs> get a bunch of our yellow. Get it going. Get it rolling. Uh, Gorgolfa right off the bat to uh, get us that mana that we need. Mercy into Gorgolfa isn't really a combo I run too much, but it is a pretty devastating combo. Uh, I very rarely actually show teams that particularly utilize it, but uh, it is very strong, even though I don't happen to show it that much or that often. Okay, so we get our Mercy, we get most of our mana there. We're going to get another uh, Dawnbringer down for that split damage. Uh, basically, every single team that you ever use with Dawnbringer is focused on multi-hitting the enemy team. There really isn't much a point in um, trying to form anything other than that, uh, like skulls or like single targets. Uh, basically, just full AoE all the way is pretty much the way to go with a uh, Dawnbringer. Anything that can multi-hit at least two enemies, as well as things that can hit all enemies, are the things that you're looking for with a Dawnbringer to be able to use it to its full potential. Also, uh, having mana generation sources are pretty much a requirement. Uh, similar to all mythic um, troops that are in the game, uh, the mythic weapon is no exception. The mythic uh, mythics are really, really bad if they don't have enough mana, and uh, they can be handicapped pretty hard if they are unable to get it. So here's a little bit of another annoying team. I'm not quite sure if I'll actually be able to do this one against, but we're going to be utilizing the yellow factor a little bit more this time around. Uh, we can great create yellow red off our humilities that we will then be able to use to power uh, our team, uh, particularly the magic buff on it, as well as just getting its mana in general. He also has a death that will be triggering our humility that actually worked out pretty coincidentally that we end up going up against a death team that actually helps us quite a bit given that a Humility fully traded will be able to absorb uh, basically uh, a bunch of extra stats every single time. So that's going to be quite convenient. Please don't get a Skull. No! Why, 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 why? <laughs> that luck, or lack thereof. We were just about to get started on it, too. I was about to mention, um, Scion is pretty good against these, but oh well. Uh, I was kind of hoping we would be able to get away with that with that kind of start, but out of nowhere, we'll get the Explosion Skull. 
ignoring Explosion Skull. I, I think he's going to drain our mana, basically making us to the point of useless at that. Uh, once he does that, we'll try for the Skull up here. It's our only chance. Don't get it. He gets his drain. We have to take this other Skull just to make sure he doesn't do anything. It does give us a bit of mana, and he just Skulls it right back. We can't keep our mana for one second now, can we? Okay, we're just going to retreat from this. Try again. Try, try again. We shall. So, round... What is this? Four? <laughs> a lot of rematches this time. But we shall prevail. Okay, again, let's try this. So, uh, to the case of like I was making before, this is by no means an overpowered weapon. It is decent, but it is far from being perfect, that is for sure. I think its main uh, purpose, I would say, what this weapon is for, uh, is kind of not what's really being used right now. But I would say against full AoE and single burst troops. Anything that's oriented with those two things, this team will be really good at countering. Uh, but that's about the biggest things they can really counter. And right now, those would be things like all dragon teams, maybe something like a... Um, what other all AoE teams? Probably even the all goblins team. Uh, most of these would pre be pretty decent against. But as far as throwing against like mana drain spam and uh, extra turn spam, uh, aside from the goblin team, it is going to be uh, a little bit handicapped because it likes to keep its mana. It really, really needs to keep its mana. At least there we get to keep the uh, flower. We don't get to get damaged because we have the barrier there. But we start losing our mana. We don't really have anything, any kind of footing. Uh, that tends to happen with most mythics, though, uh, that you fall behind and you can't really get your mana back up because your generator just got disabled like that. <laughs> and then you can't do anything. Really? We're going to lose twice in a row? You're going to do that to us? You're going to do that to us with a famine? You're going to do it? Come on now. Oh, too bad we don't have mercy right there. We did. <laughs> we kind of did. Not for long. But yeah, this team is based around getting a gigantic burst at the start and then utilizing that for the rest of the battle. But if we get it disabled immediately off of famine on like, what was it, turn two or three? Uh, we won't really be able to do much then. Uh, we still can redeem this as long as he doesn't double that into an extra turn. And he does. That's quite unfortunate. <laughs> so, yeah, that's going to be unwinnable then. So, this team looks like it won't be prevailing. But let's go with the final one, which is the... Not that one. Which is the main one that I have been showing. I did want to save it for last because most of you have probably already seen me use it. And is probably one of the stronger ones, if not the strongest team that you can use with this. Uh, it is the Alchemist Hellcat Loop with the weapon up front using Assassin Class plus the Infernus in the back. Uh, the first team that we showed in some situations will be stronger than this one, uh, but in this case, uh, as long as we're not up against a Famine, this one should be fine. Essentially what we need to do is have a little bit of a slow start just to get it rolling, and uh, then we can kind of just go crazy from there. Uh, right here, we will want to go and try to get one of our two mana generators up. We pretty much perpetually want to keep a mana generator up. Uh, that really goes with most teams though. But uh, particularly this team, we will want to keep at least one mana generator as we are using a triple color troop in first slot that is blocking a good deal of our uh, mana accumulation. So we've got to be really, really careful uh, with how we do some of our moves because we could just have a gigantic troop like that blocking us for a long duration of time. So right there we do get the uh, surge, which we definitely needed because we need to clear out quite a bit of this board to really be able to get the health patch functioning. And still not enough board cleared out. We could throw it on the yellow if we wanted to. Uh, that would help us to be able to get the boost ratio, but of course then would leave us with no yellow after. I believe I am going to go for it, mainly because I just need to clear out the board as much as we possibly can right now. Uh, and it seemed to have done the job decently. Uh, he's going to get scroll distracted next turn, from which we can just throw down the Dawnbringer and then throw an Infernus off top of it, basically for the cleanup. So as I mentioned, that's a team I've mainly been running with it. It's the preferred team, I would say, that you would end up using with it. I wanted to show some other ones first, and I I can't leave that one team getting zero, zero wins. We cannot end a battle or a video where we use a team where we literally lost every single time. I, when I was testing this, this went a lot better than than now, but we'll, we got this. This time we got this. Here we go. We got this this time. Here, this is what it's supposed to do. Finally. It only took you how many times to get going? You just keep using it on yellow, red, keep getting buffed up, and thank you. Well, third time's the charm, apparently, and one shot dead. Uh, that actually worked a little bit too good that time. It doesn't normally do it that good, but realistically, in between us losing instantly and what just occurred that battle will happen most of the time. 
Um, but yeah, that was actually really lucky. I guess, it, yeah, third time's a charm. <laughs> Two horrible battles with it. A third time where we just win in like seconds. I'll take it. Anyways, <laughs> that's the new Dawnbringer. It costs 1.3 million souls, uh, counting all the things, plus a bunch of other resources. Uh, realistically, is it worth getting this weapon? No. <laughs> it is way, way too high of a mana, uh, or not a mana, uh, um, way too high of a cost, just in general, as far as resources to get this weapon. This is a weapon mainly for the completionists out there that want to have literally everything there is in the game. I do have to say, this weapon is outstandingly strong in Arena. You can literally just solo teams with that weapon in Arena. You don't even need a team. It's literally just that weapon. It is that strong. But uh, other than maybe Arena and, of course, some f a few fun teams, it isn't really going to get much use. It does have its purposes, but it's not really going to be needed for that 1.3 million soul cost. There are so many more things that you can be doing with those souls. But if you have a surplus of, like, over a million just laying there, it's like some people do, like myself, and you have nothing else to put in, then yes, do go for the Dawnbringer. But uh, if you think 1 million is a large amount of souls, don't even bother. Uh, with the current quickest methods of soul farming in the game, uh, 20,000 souls per hour is approximately how long it takes with a Valkyrie Triple Warlock doing any uh, single challenge, uh, like the first challenge in uh, Divinity Fields, like right over here. Uh, that would take you 50 hours just to be able to farm enough souls for 1 million, which would be for the weapon, and if you didn't already have 300,000, then it will take uh, even more hours than that. And if you use the best method in the game, which very few people actually have, which is three Ferris Raws plus a Valkyrie, that will take uh, that will be about around 50,000 souls per hour, a little bit more if you go uh, really efficiently with it. But let's just say 50,000 souls per hour, and uh, that would end up taking you 20,000 or 20,000. That would be insane. 20 hours to be able to get the Dawnbringer, the million souls that you would need for, and 26 for the uh, full amount that you would need to get all of the weapons required for it. So definitely some very, very, very high uh, time amounts. And of course, scouting parties, generally one of the ones that people tend to go to to farm that all up. There are a few others that you can do, but any of them that are super weak. Divinion Fields just happens to be the weakest if you do want to happen to farm the souls for it. But anyways, that'll wrap it up for this video. If you have any other question about the Soul Forge or weapons in general or Gems of War in general, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching and have a wonderful day.